guys and welcome back to Bite Size Excel. In this week's video we're going to take another look at XLOOKUP and how you can use XLOOKUP with named ranges to make it really clear what exactly you're looking up in your workbook. First we're going to take a quick recap of XLOOKUP. So XLOOKUP was added in 2019 and it's meant to be a replacement for VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. It's quite intuitive to use so we go equals XLOOKUP you select your lookup value, which in this instance is May. I want to look up my month in this column here. And then I want to return for argument's sake, let's say site two. And hit enter and we'll get 392. And that's essentially your replacement for VLOOKUP. However, XLOOKUP can also look up specific rows, which basically makes it a replacement for HLOOKUP. So in this instance, we're going to go equals XLOOKUP. I'm going to look up our value. We want to look up in their site headers. And again, this time we want to look up May. And you'll see that we get the same results. But how does this look when we use it with named ranges? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my data for site one. I'm going to come up to define name in my formulas tab. And when I click on this, it will give me a suggestion site one for this data. And I'm going to repeat this for each of my other sites. I'm also going to do the same thing for each of my months. And as you can see, as I click on define name, it's giving me a suggestion based on the first value within your row. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to name these ranges. I'm going to call this one month underscore lookup. If you want to know a little bit more about named ranges, I'll link my video on named ranges in the description below. And I'm going to call the one below site lookup. And one final thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to name my first column month And my headers the sites. So what does this look like when we use it with XLOOKUP? So we're going to start equals XLOOKUP, select my month, then my month range, and then the site that I want to look up. And you can see that it's actually put in the names of all those different ranges. And we get the same value we did earlier on. We can also go equals X lookup. We can actually start to type in the named range. So I want to go for my site lookup. I want to look up my sites. And you see that it comes up with a full list of all the, the ranges that I've named. And then I want to look up May. And there we've got that named range. And if we hit enter, we get the same values. So when you go in and you look at your formula, it makes it much clearer what exactly you're looking up. You can also do the same steps with the table. So here we have the exact same data, but formatted in a table format. And if we were to do our X look up here, we look up our value of May in our month column. So we can see that it's gone table one and month. And then we might want to look up site two. And if we hit enter, we've got that data. Now the way you make this clear is you can name your table. So we go to table design, we could name this as data 2021. This would then make it clear if you had multiple tables, what data table you're looking up and what column and what site. It doesn't work quite as well with the table when you're doing looking at rows. So we can go equals X lookup. We look up site two. We want to look it up in our headers here. And then we want to look up our May data. So you can see that's not quite as clear what exactly it's looking up. But typically I'd say you're probably using your equivalent of VLOOKUP, in which case it does make it quite clear what data you're looking up without having to go through all the hassle of naming individual rows and columns. So maybe for small data sets or very specific lookups, you could use named ranges. 
For larger data sets, tables is probably slightly better. So that's a quick summary of how you can use XLOOKUP with named ranges or with tables to make it really clear what data you're looking up in your workbook. And it also makes amending your formulas much, much quicker and easier. I hope that you found this video useful. Do leave me a comment if there's anything that you'd like to see in future videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.